Guys, do you know using UiPath apps, we can create conditional tables. What do I mean by conditional table? For example, if I select Apple here, you can see the table is showing only the values from the Apple brand like iPhone 12, 13, 14. If I'm going to select Samsung, again showing the brands from the Samsung, the model names from the Samsung. So this is called a conditional table. How do I create a conditional table? We are going to learn in this video. So without making any further delay, let's get started. All right, so first of all, let me close this. First thing you have to do, go to your data service and create two different tables. Have a look at this table. For example, if I open this table, brand phone, in the brand phone table, I only have the brand names. Let me go to the data and you can see all different brands, OnePlus, Apple, only the brand name, only the company name it contains. This is one table. There is another table called models. This table contains two different columns. One is the brand name. You can see OnePlus, Samsung and on the right hand side, I have the model names. For example, OnePlus has got so many different models. Right? For example, I have taken few models. Samsung has got so many models. Apple has got so many different models. So for demo purpose, these are a couple of uh, you know, small table I have created with the brand name and the model name. Clear? Now let's go back. Let's see how this can be built in the UiPath App Studio. First of all, let me delete all the things that I have got here. Now the very first control that I need is a drop down which is an input control right so drag and drop and then i need another control for this demo that is a table table is a display control now for the this one for the drop down let's change the label to select your brand okay select your brand and this table should show me only the brands so I should be able to associate my uh, drop down with this brand underscore phone. This is the table I should associate with. Now to do that, all I have to do is simply select the drop down. And in the list source, I have to tell him which is the source from where you would like to pull the data. So here I'll put a equals to symbol. And then I have entities. These entities I have already imported into my app studio. So you can see brand phone and model phone has come. All I have to do is simply double click on the brand phone. So what happened? I am linking my app studio drop down to this table called brands phone, which is there inside the data service. Once this is done, then I am, it is asking, Hey, your table could have multiple columns. Now, which column you want to show? So here, let me show the brand name. I want to show the brand name. So now when you hit on preview, it will only show Apple, Samsung like that. It is going to appear. Now there's a table below it. Now this table should only show the data from which table it should only show the data from the models phone. That means it should show the brand name and it should show the model names, two columns. How do you get that? Now to get that, select the table, go to the general and click on the data source. Okay, simply click on the data source, type equals to here we need filtered data. Remember, when customer is selecting Apple, it should only show the Apple brand and couple of models from Apple which is available. Okay. Now, to do that, I have to use a function called filter. Okay. So scroll down, you would find a function called filter. Okay. This is actually quite simple to write. Simply write filter and put open and close parenthesis. Now, inside the open and close parenthesis, I have to say, hey, you have to filter the data from a table. What is the table? The table is nothing but entities, right? You have to filter the from this table, model phone number, right? So I'm just double clicking on the model phone number. So filter data from model phone number, then put a comma. Then I'm going to use a condition where the brand name is, is equals to whatever the user has selected here. If the user has selected Apple, that means the brand name should be Apple. Then you filter the data based on that. So for this, put a square bracket, open and close square bracket. 
Inside that, I am simply mentioning, I'll go to this table, expand the table, and here I'm saying brand name. Okay, brand name is the column. I'm going to select brand name, put a comma, then within double quotes, this is how it will be written. Okay, in uh, right and various programming languages are different ways of writing syntaxes. So this is the way to write this syntax. Okay, comma equals to then comma. Then what I want, whatever the user has selected, that should appear here. Okay, now for that we will simply use a variable. Okay, so I am going to use a variable called a here. Double click. Okay, so the a variable has come. Now the a variable is currently blank. What we will do, we will go to this drop down, go to the event, create a rule, set a value and then I am going to use the variable a. Okay, I am going to use the variable a here and I am saying whenever the user selects something in the drop down, you should automatically assign that value to a. Okay, so here I am saying um, drop down, right? go to the new page and here is the uh, drop down selected value. So whatever the user selected, it is going to carry it forward to the a and once a has some value, this a value is put over here as a filter condition. So it will say, let's say somebody is selecting Apple. So it will say Apple, if the brand name is equal to Apple, it will filter as per the Apple brand name. Okay, simple condition. Now let me run a preview. You will be able to see how this one is working. Now let me select, let's say Samsung. So you can see Samsung has come. If I select Apple, then Apple is getting refreshed. If I select OnePlus, now OnePlus. So you got the condition how this can be a conditional table how it can be designed so thank you guys for watching we are going to meet once again in our next content till then do not forget to subscribe and like this video thank you we are going to meet once again